This is the history of espresso machines quickly summarized. Now, when most people think of espresso machines, they're thinking of the E61 machine that was invented in 1961. Now, that machine gives you a flat nine bar of espresso, and that's what we've got here. That machine didn't have any pre-infusion, but soon people added a switch on and off that allowed them to add some water at line pressure. And you can do that here, and that's what that looks like, is water coming in, and then it rises and goes at nine bar. But before the E61, we had lever machines that gave us more flexibility. Let me show you what those look like. So initially you didn't have pre-infusion and the max pressure was something more like six bar. But what's different about them is that it was a lever like this and the pressure would decrease as the puck was getting extracted. And so what you have is very little time at peak pressure but then the pressure is going down to zero bar over quite a long time. And lever shots would typically run 40 seconds, even 50 seconds, because the pressure would go way down. Often you take the cup away at the last minute. So that's what a lever shot looked like. Initially, as I said, they were limited to about six bar. People put stronger springs in them, going up to about nine bar, and then eventually adding two springs, going all the way to 10 bar. With those two springs came the ability to shape the actual amount of pressure hold because that first spring could hold the pressure longer. So you have a longer hold pressure time and then a decrease down to zero. Again, people added switches, so you could now do pre-infusion. And that was basically the state of the art for lever machines. Pre-infusion, two springs, and then a decrease down to zero. Typically you take the cup away so you actually wouldn't go to zero bar. You'd end up somewhere around here when you take your cup away. Now, we eventually end up having pressure profiling machines. And what pressure profiling machines do is they just do that. Instead of going down to zero, they would typically go down to four bar or six bar. They also would have some real time control over what your peak pressure is. Typically six bar being a kind of cool hipster thing uh, and eight bar being seen as a more gentle, more traditional espresso. And again, going down here. Then finally, Slayer innovated this whole idea of a slow pre-infusion. So you notice everything here is going high pressure, kind of fast, espresso, right? Fast. Now, Slayer shots look quite different. Slayer shots slow down the pre-infusion, which previously was always at the speed of the tap, so a full on tap. Instead, they're somewhere around one mil per second. In my case, I do a 37 second pre-infusion. And at the end of that, flat nine bar, but not for very long because the puck is so saturated with water that all the espresso squeezes out. So that's the history of espresso machines quickly summarized. So Paul, what do you think of all that? It's pretty amazing. Um, I think, you know, having the, you know, very prolific different styles of espresso machine at your fingertips um, is, is really great to experiment with, but not just to experiment, but also to taste from it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, even if you've never experienced it before, uh, in like a lever machine, you will get a sense of uh, what sort of style of a shot it is. Um, and, you know, you can kind of also see the engineering, like you said, with the, the multiple springs or the single springs. Um, I thought that was really interesting, especially with the two springs thing, when it went up to 10 bar. Um, I didn't actually know that. So yeah, it's all very cool. What I really also didn't understand was why did it all go to zero? Why did it not originally just stop like a, a, a pressure profiling machine uh, where it would stop roughly where you would want to end the extraction. Okay, so when you've got lever machines, you've got two kinds of lever machines. One kind is fully manual where you're just pulling on a lever and whatever muscle power you're putting in is going into the puck. Right, okay. okay? Those kind of went away fairly quickly because they require some skill. Mm -hmm. You have to know how much pressure and when. Those were replaced by spring levers, where the spring, you would wind the ding dang down all the way down at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then the spring would continue to exert force against the puck. Oh, okay. Okay? And essentially the springs were calibrated to give you a curve that made good espresso. Mm -hmm. And the problem was, is that a spring would immediately start at your peak pressure, and then immediately decline, right? So you had this curve down. Right. And what people wanted is they wanted a bit of hold for a while. So that's why they added the second spring, ah. is that first spring would hold for a while, 
and then the two springs would decline. Yes. yes. Now, the, your question as to why they go down to zero, because that spring is always going to uncoil until it goes to zero. Uh, but most lever machines don't have a way to release pressure. Uh, so that spring is still unwinding and still putting pressure against it. Okay. And there's no way to, to stop the espresso and have it go and have the pressure go elsewhere. On E61 machines, you'll see a little pressure relief here that kind of spits at you at the end of a shot. So people would let the shot run. So pull the spring, let it go up. And then when the shot was the right amount, slide it aside and let the pressure unwind from the spring. Ah, okay. And pressure nice. release didn't really come until quite a bit later. Right, okay. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> so and very much actually what's happening is even though a lever machine might go nine bar to zero bar, uh -huh people were taking the cup away at three or four bar. Ah. They weren't letting it go all the way to the bottom. Right, right. So lever machines very much did what pressure profiling machines you know, now do with technology, except they did it with springs. The thing that technology gives us is the ability to quickly move between them, right? So changing springs on a lever machine uh, isn't really doable. No, more time um, consuming. Yeah. yeah, and those springs were calibrated for a certain style of coffee, and mm -hmm. that was usually dark roasted Italian coffee. Oh, okay. And the profile you want is different with, say, Nordic roast or other kind of light roast. Right, yes. So I guess what you're referring to is it's, it's affecting the flow rate differently as compared to, you know, let's say in the decent way, you can set the flow rate to higher. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, say flow rate at all because right. levers are about pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, the flow rate is really dependent on how much the coffee will resist the pressure. I see. So that lever is going from nine bar to six bar, mm -hmm. but how coarse the coffee is yep. and how much the coffee resists the water over time is mm -hmm. going to affect the actual flow rate that's coming out. Yes. So yes. you know you're gonna get nine bar to six bar, but how fast is the water gonna come out as coffee mm -hmm. is dependent entirely on grind and coffee. Yes. yes. And that's why lever machines were not brilliant at, the ones with springs, mm -hmm. were not brilliant at light roast because right, that spring was calibrated for a dark roasted puppy puck that holds its integrity for a long time. Mm -hmm. Light roasts will tend to lose their integrity quickly and that spring lever is now doing too much pressure for too long. Right, I see. So yes. um, what's really become the fad, and I think it's a good reason, is if you have a light roast and you like levers, you get a springless lever, one where your bicep is controlling it. Right, okay. Now you can control the curve to be optimal for that bean. Yes. And that's awesome, and it's a lot of fun, um, but that's not silly for everybody. So that's kind of why we did this machine, was that the people who want to geek out getting the optimum curve for different beans. Mm -hmm. They do this programming we just did, and other people, they just choose the profile that works. Right, yes, yes. All right, thanks for listening. Hope that was a useful video.